Hi, I will be presenting the paper Attitude Towards and Evaluation of Computer-Generated Music in uh, Music Listeners and Musicians. And in this context, music listeners are people who do not have formal musical education, and musicians are people with at least five years of uh, formal musical education. My name is Anna Alianaki, and I'm affiliated with the University of Tartu. Um, so uh, there is um, mm, some evidence of bias against uh, computer-generated art. Uh, although computers are widely accepted as being uh, capable in areas of uh, finance, for instance, mm, for fraud detection in banking, uh, self-driving or assisting people, Mm, taking uh, some self-driving uh, functionality on themselves and uh, surveillance, uh, like detecting uh, attacks and um, intruders, which are um, high stakes um, applications of AI. Uh, however, when it comes to creative output, uh, which are uh, relatively low stakes, Mm, there is still an uh, ambiguity in uh, attitude and um, a problem when accepting computers as being uh, able to originate art, uh, computers as artists themselves. For instance, in uh, Moffat and Kelly in 2006, uh, it has been shown that paintings are perceived uh, as worse and are rated lower on um, evaluation criteria when uh, people think that these paintings are computer generated, as opposed to when we tell them that these paintings were painted by a human. Uh, in this presentation, I will not um, show references in full. The references uh, in full are inside the paper. Then uh, computer music creativity is even viewed as undesirable uh, by music professionals because it's generated uh, generating competitions um, and taking away jobs and uh, musicians um, think that we don't really need computers to become uh, creative successfully and are skeptical about them being able to do so. Uh, as for evidence uh, of um, um, bias against uh, computer-generated music specifically, uh, there is contradicting evidence uh, in some papers. Um, the two references in the first point, it is shown that there is bias. Um, in some papers, it is shown that um, there is no bias. It is not confirmed experimentally, and there is no statistically significant difference between how people rate uh, music when they think uh, it is generated by computers versus generated by humans. Mm. And uh, in uh, one of the papers, uh, it was believed that um, mm, uh, music listeners think that it's uh, less acceptable for AI composed music to be used in high involvement context. A high involvement context is um, a context with high involvement of music listeners, such as a concert, uh, where a person is intensely focusing on music only, as uh, opposed to a low involvement context, for instance, when music is used uh, inside the lobby of a reception um, or elsewhere playing on the background when a person is not um, specifically paying attention to music. Mm, it is interesting that in this study, music professionals uh, believed that uh, it is all right to use music in high involvement context and had more um, trust in computer generated uh, music than uh, music listeners. So in this paper, we ask these questions. Uh, can the same value system that humans use to experience music be applied to music made by a computer? Uh, and can the same evaluation criteria be applied to both human composed and computer generated music? Uh, and uh, which factors are behind the bias against uh, computer generated art? So in uh, the first experiment, uh, we um, 
try to confirm whether there is a, a computer generated uh, bias against computer generated music. Uh, people are listening to a piece Piano Distance by Doro Tukamitz. It sounds like this. And then I listen to a piece composed by performance on them. You can see that the first piece um, uh, sounds a little bit like computer music, and the second piece uh, has this um, mistake characteristics of uh, computer music in the end. Um, and uh, we give them this piece to listen, and to one group we tell that uh, um, the piece composed by Takemitsu is actually composed by a computer. Uh, and uh, the performance around then one is a human composer and uh, the other group, uh, vice versa, we tell them the correct um, uh, knowledge that uh, uh, well, Takemitsu piece is a human composed one and uh, performance around then one is a computer composed one. Uh, and then we ask them to evaluate it uh, on its aesthetic uh, value from one to ten. Mm, and then we ask them which criteria they uh, used when evaluating this piece and whether they think that uh, they should apply the same criteria when evaluating human composed and computer generated music. And um, mm, what we found is that uh, there was uh, some difference between how they evaluated it, but it was not uh, statistically significant. So indeed, when people perceived that uh, people thought that the uh, piano distance is human composed, they rated it a bit higher than uh, when they perceived it as computer generated music, and uh, the same for performance or an end. Mm. Uh, but not significantly so. Uh, and uh, uh, overwhelming majority said that um, the aesthetic enjoyment should be the main criteria and that they would apply um, the same criteria to computer generated and human generated music because because um, we are rating them for their utilitarian value. And then we interviewed some musicians uh, with similar questions. They also listened to the same uh, two pieces uh, but it was just used in order to give some material for uh, discussion. Mm. And uh, they were also asked whether music composition is a goal-oriented process and whether they should uh, a composer should keep a goal in mind uh, when uh, evaluating. Mm. Okay, so uh, people indicated uh, that there is um, a problem with computer generated music that it lacks uh, intentional um, agency, uh, meaning that computers don't uh, don't have any uh, impetus to compose this music. It is coming externally, so they are not expressing their feelings or they are not uh, using music as um, therapy or any uh, sort of um, intention that a human composer might have. 
is absent in in uh, in case of a computer. This is a well known problem which was highlighted before. Uh, so people say that um, when music is written by a human, they are willing to search deeper for the meaning in it. Uh, and that uh, music affects me most when I sense a similarity in what the composer has been experiencing and what I have experienced in my life. It is of paramount value to which extent the composer is capable of expressing their deeply personal emotional experience in their composition. And uh, some solutions were proposed to the lack of this intentional agency. Uh, and one was um, um, defining some expressive intent when composing music, which is it is defined by some human and then um, the extent to which expressive intent is fulfilled is used as an evaluation metric. So music composition is a process driven by an internal impetus to express an emotion or to tell a story. The computer lacks this impetus, but this is a possibility for a human and uh, a computer creativity to augment each other. A uh, human should act as an external uh, stimulus to the computer to start creating by providing this necessary initial impetus. Then it was uh, proposed that we could use a human composer to combine raw material coming from the computer with creative intent. A human composer can take inspiration from computer generated ideas and put them together in a meaningful way. Only human touch will help this abandoned ideas to obtain meaning. And then uh, abandoning creative intent altogether to explore the possibility of computer music that is unlike human music. Computer music does not need to imitate human music in any in every way. We might find new meaning in music based completely on statistical principles, which might well be alien to human nature, but still have value. So these were uh, the solutions to the problem of um, lack of intentional agency in computer generated music. Thank you for listening uh, to this presentation. Mm. And uh, uh, feel free to look up more material inside the paper.